Thank you, Krina. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This morning, my talk will be on how working from home can affect your eyesight and what you can do for, about it. As we all know, working from home and online meetings during the recent COVID-19 pandemic has led to people spending much more time on their digital devices. This increasing dependence on our digital devices, be it for work, entertainment, or for social needs, has been affecting our eyes. It can contribute to the increase in people developing computer vision syndrome, which, beyond eye problems, can include headaches, neck, and back pains as a result of staring at screens for prolonged hours. Even before the, the pandemic in 2015, surveys already showed that Singaporeans were spending about three to four hours daily online on non-work-related activities. Furthermore, with the new trend of working from home, as well as our students going for home-based learning from home on the computer screen, we can imagine that the total amount of time spent not just on the computers, but also on other digital devices, including your tablet and the now ubiquitous mobile phones, is probably increased quite drastically. So what is computer vision syndrome? This is not just one specific problem, but actually a whole group of problems that can result from prolonged use of digital devices. It is similar to carpal tunnel syndrome and other repetitive motion injuries in the sense that it is a condition that arises from repetitive movement. So patients may suffer from blur vision, eye strain, headache, dry eyes, and even body aches, particularly neck and shoulder ache. Why does computer vision occur? It happens because of a whole amalgamation of various factors. This can include environmental factors, such as poor lighting, the glare from the digital screens that you are using, improper viewing distances between the screens and yourself, a poor sleeping posture, or even uncorrected vision problems. Again, it is unlikely that it is due to just one simple condition, but probably due to a, a variety of these factors. What happens if computer vision syndrome is not addressed? This can lead to long-term problems such as neck, back problems, and even prolonged eye discomfort and strain, dry eyes and headaches. We have noticed that recently, ever since the trend of working from home and home-based learning, we are seeing an increase in the number of patients coming in with digital eye strain. Lunchtime breaks, which were previously an outing out to the food court or the hawker center or a restaurant, now have been converted to lunchtime online meetings. In-person meetings, which gave the opportunity to speak to others face-to-face -face without the use of digital devices are now conducted online. Even other professions that were spared from less exposure to screen time, such as the teachers, now have to use digital devices very frequently at work. So, as you can imagine, there are so many people who are being affected by this. And how can we reduce the chances of us developing computer vision syndrome. This is a screenshot from the movie, The Matrix. And if you observe it carefully, there are many inappropriate settings here. The lighting in this room is very dim. There are multiple screens, all placed at different heights, which will require a lot of motion from the neck, the back, and even the eyes to look at these various screens. The chair doesn't look particularly comfortable, and it's also raised and elevated at a height where it seems a bit too high for the one seat to be placed on the ground. So let's move on to how you can modify your work environment so as to minimize your risk of developing computer vision syndrome. First of all, do adjust your monitor position. It should be placed directly in front of you, roughly at about one arm's length away. Very important is not to have the monitor above your eye level. The top of the screen should be at your eye level or just slightly below your eye level, and the center of the screen should be placed around 10 to 15 degrees below your eye level. This reduces the chance of any further neck strain as well as headaches developing from permanently gazing upwards at the screen. If you have any reference materials, this should be placed between the keyboard and the monitor. They should not be placed at a position that requires repetitive neck movement 
or head turning. Alternatively, if you have a document holder, it can be placed at the side of the screen at the same height. So again, to minimize the amount of neck, head movement, as well as repetitive motions. For seating wise, you may consider getting an ergonomic chair that is comfortably padded and cushioned and allows for good support to your back. The chair height of importance should not be too high or too low, and your feet should be able to rest flat on the floor to provide adequate support. Arms should be able to be resting on an elbow rest or even just the table, and the wrist should not be carrying the weight and pressing down on the keyboard while typing a word. As for screen brightness and contrast, Nowadays, a lot of the newer models of the computer screens can be adjusted and the flicker rate is generally quite high. However, you should adjust your screen brightness to match the room brightness. If the room is too bright, this causes a lot of glare. On the other hand, if the screens are too bright, the eyes will feel a lot strained. If you are unable to adjust the settings adequately to a comfortable level, you may consider putting a screen glare filter on. Do also increase the contrast to reduce the eye strain. This is because pixelated um, images on the screen are different from the images that you are looking at on a printed out sheet of paper. There is a central black dot that is in focus, whereas all the peripheral images around the dot are not in focus, and the eyes have to constantly refocus in order to view clearly. This is also why you might feel that you have increased strain when looking and reading off a screen on digital devices as compared to reading off a printed device, a printed sheet of paper rather. And increasing the contrast can reduce the amount of work that your eyes have to do. In terms of room lighting, it's a bit like a Goldilocks and the two bears, not too dim, not too bright, but just nice right in the middle. You should avoid the glare from any overhead lighting or the windows. And if you are able to adjust your seating position, you should ideally seat yourself perpendicular to the window. This is because if the window is located behind your computer screen, the monitor is surrounded by a lot of light, and this causes a great amount of eye strain. On the other hand, if the window is placed behind you, there's a lot of reflection of the sunlight off on the screen and this can cause a headache-inducing glare. If possible, you may consider curtains or drapes if you are unable to modify your seating position to a comfortable level where there is an adequate amount of brightness. You may also consider taking frequent eye breaks. A rule of thumb is this 20-20-20 rule, which is easy to remember. About every 20 minutes after doing work, take a break for 20 seconds. Look at something outside the window, far away, at least 20 feet away. This allows your eyes to get a rest intermittently. Also, you may consider getting away from your computer screen every 30 minutes if you can, and obtain proper optical correction. It is very important that you have glasses that meet the demand of the job. This is because reading distance from a book, for instance, that you might be holding as compared to looking at a computer screen distance are very different. Younger people might be able to adapt well because the accommodative facility of their eyes are very strong and there has not been the setting in of press myopia. However, with the prolonged need and to use digital screens, as well as with age, press myopia may worsen your situation. So do speak to your optometrist at your spectacle shop. Let them know what your setup at home is. Let them know what you intend to use this pair of glasses for. Let them know if you need one pair of glasses for reading of a book or paper documents and another pair of glasses for using the computer. They will be able to help you and suggest a variety of options, including progressive glasses, separate pairs of reading glasses, or even... Uh, suggest other alternatives for you. If you have contact lenses and you prefer the use of contact lenses, you may continue. However, do note that contact lenses do add an element of dry eyes 
which is already a condition seen in computer vision syndrome. So if you are wearing contact lenses, please use them as according to the instructions. Do not exceed the stated number of hours of use and always maintain good contact lens hygiene so as to minimize your chances of developing any further complications. Also, go to your spectacle shop for regular eye checks to see if the degree of your glasses or your contact lens is adequate. As you age and as time goes by, you might find that there is a change in the refractive error and an updating of these refractive aids would be very helpful. As mentioned previously, dry eyes is one very common symptom seen in computer vision syndrome and something that a lot of people come in to see the ophthalmologist for. You can consider the use of regular lubricants and frequent blinking, especially when you're using your digital devices. When we are not actually using our digital devices, we do blink at a much higher frequency, about every 15 to 20 seconds. However, when you are using your digital devices, you might notice that you are so focused that you forget to blink so frequently. One study has actually shown that the blinking rate increases drastically to about one time every two to three minutes. Compare that with one time every 15 to 20 seconds, and you can imagine why your dry eye situation is worsening. So while it might be something that sounds very innocuous, try to remind yourself to blink frequently and consider the use of regular lubricants. If you are able to adjust your seating position as well, to avoid the fan or the air conditioner blowing directly at your face. This can most definitely worsen the dry eye condition. However, if you are unable to adjust these settings, then the lubricants are of even higher importance. You may obtain these lubricants over the counter from any pharmacy outside. I would also encourage the frequent breaks as mentioned previously. If you can, don't just adhere to the 20-20-20 rule, but also do take a good break for the rest of your body. Get away, walk around, stretch your back, stretch your arms and legs, rotate all your muscles so that you can loosen them up and relax. This also helps to prevent any problems such as neck ache, back ache, shoulder strain. I hope this has been useful. Um, we will now go on into the Q&A session. So we do have a few questions that um, I think some of my colleagues will be able to address later uh, from the glaucoma and the cataract talk. So I will leave that for them. Okay, so we do have a question from Mr. Uh, David Anandaraju. His question is, information and data are what keeps Singapore competitive, but increasingly information is on the electronic screen. And how much damage or how is the damage compared to reading traditional books printed on paper? So as mentioned, um, reading traditional books printed on paper usually puts less strain on the eyes because of the fact that when you have printed text, it is sharp edges that, are, that you can read off the printed paper. However, when you are looking off digital screens, the pixels do not have sharp edges and the eyes have to constantly refocus. So that is one reason why you might feel more eye strain when using a computer or tablet or even your mobile phones as compared to reading off paper. And from Issa Chua, it says, my teenage girl complains of dry eyes and has been using refresh eye drops continuously over three months. Is this bad? So we do note that our 
teenagers and students also have been have been exposed to increased amount of uh, digital screen time. As you know, the younger generations are also very uh, dependent on their mobile phones and their tablets for both social activities, whether it's social media, video games, or just internet surfing. And also now that when they go to school, they have home-based learning, and this increases the amount of screen time. Perhaps this is one contributing factor as to why your teenager might be complaining of dry eyes. If necessary, and she feels that she does require the lubricants in order to gain more comfort, then she should continue to use the lubricants. However, perhaps you should look for any underlying um, causes as to why she might be experiencing these severe dry eyes. Perhaps take a look into the amount of time that she has been spending on the digital devices. Similarly, another person is asking, is it safe to use eye lubricants daily and continuously for life? So in general, eye lubricants are, they do not contain any sort of um, potentially harmful medications such as steroids or, or anything else, but they can sometimes con contain preservatives, which some people might be allergic to. Otherwise, they are just simply something similar to moisturizer for skin. These are just lubricants for your eyes, so they can help to improve your discomfort and the dry eye symptoms. We do have many patients who require a long-term use of eye lubricants. And yes, another person has asked again about lubricants. Whether any lubricants or eye drops sold at Guardian, Unity or Watson's are safe to use without the doctor's prescription. So there are many, many brands of eye lubricants that are available out there, and it's difficult to know who would prefer which brand of lubricants. I would enc encourage you to see, look at the variety that is available. They are generally safe to use, and they are over-the-counter medications, so they do not actually require this uh, doctor's prescription. We have an, another person who is asking whether they, we would recommend any method to remind ourselves to blink during computer time. Uh, it is a little bit tricky. I would say if you are able to every minute or so, make sure that you have at least blink once. Although I do agree that while focusing hard on the computer screen, we do tend to lose track of time. And so Alan Drew is asking whether we can buy computer glasses just for looking at computer. Definitely, yes, we do have a lot of people who have computer glasses and a separate pair of reading glasses. So if you feel that it is uh, more comfortable for you to wear computer glasses separately, that's fine. Alternatively, you can speak to your optician about having a pair of progressive glasses, which some people find more convenient. However, not everybody is able to adapt well to the use of these. So do seek your optician's uh, opinion before you purchase a pair. Ms. Siti Saleha is asking whether a computer or phone is better for viewing. Well, the fact is that the phone screen is definitely a lot smaller than a computer screen. So this adds an additional dimension of strain on your eyes, especially for long-term viewing. I would recommend a larger screen on the computer as compared to a phone screen. Alternatively, if you have to use your phone or your tablet, you may consider increasing the size of the fonts in order to reduce the amount of strain on your eyes. Okay. And we have somebody asking about whether it is possible to reverse the effect of eyesight deterioration from too much screen time. Um, it is possible to minimize as well as to reverse the symptoms such as dry eyes and eye strain if you are able to correct them early enough. However, if you have exposed yourself to long-term um, discomfort such as the neck strain or neck ache, then this might be a little bit difficult. If you have persistently caused pain or strain to your muscles, you will require a much longer period of time to reverse these symptoms. However, if simply by getting, for instance, a pair of glasses can actually help to reduce the amount of eye strain 
then this is something that can be easily reversed. Okay, so thank you everybody. I think we are out of time. For all, thank you for all your questions. If you do have any further questions, you may send it to the email as mentioned by our MC earlier. And I want to hand over the time now to the cleanup. Thank you.